Today I'm excited to bring you 10 tart pan ornaments. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome. All right, so these are not tart pans, but they're mini baking pans, so we'll throw them in the mix. These are all little tart pans or jello molds that I have received when I went shopping at the Goodwill bin store. I don't know why people throw these away. I guess they don't need them or want them anymore. Maybe they're donated because someone has passed away, but I love them and they are great to craft with. I've used them before and I wanna show y'all some new ideas for this year. Look at these in this box. They are so cute. There's like a little heart shape. There's an oval. There's two different size circles, a diamond and like an oblong shape. Really cute, a lot of options. You can do so much with these. You can age them a little bit so they don't look so bright and shiny. You know, if that's the look that you're gonna go for, and I'll definitely be showing you later in the video how you can age some of these things. Very cute. Antique wax is another thing we're gonna be using. And a little brush, kind of a stiff brush. I'm going to be using some very fine snow. This is Snow Baby's snow. My podge. It doesn't really matter what finish it is. I'm going to use wire, or you can also use some little metal hangers. Whatever little trees you want to use, these came from Dollar Tree. Here's that info for you in case you want to pick some up. And then I've got some vintage ornaments. Now, for those of you who love vintage, but you love to come to my video and insult me because I use those in projects, go ahead and, and tune out. Just go on and leave the video because I'm going to be doing some things here that may upset you. Okay? All right. Now, look at this little Frosty. How cute is he? These also came from the Goodwill bins. They would have found a new home in the garbage somewhere, and I couldn't do it. I knew that there was something I could do with these beautiful pieces, and I love bringing back that nostalgia for my viewers. So many of you enjoy those memories that creep up when you watch my videos, those really good ones. So, here you go. This one's for you, ladies and gents. Also gonna use any type of little tinsel you wanna use. This is a drink coaster and it kind of reminds me of the 70s. I got a pack of these, love them. You can also use any type of little bows or little pieces that you found when you've been out shopping. First project will be a statement bell. Now I'm calling this a statement bell because it's going to be a big ornament that you put on your tree. I've got those three little random pieces that didn't have any matches and I'm just using some, they're almost like wood washers or like a wood bead. And I'm using these to divide these, to lift them off of one another so there is some space in between. So just like a bell, they would have the freedom to kind of rock back and forth see how it would rock back and forth and you can see all the layers so what i want to do is now these are just some that came off of i don't even know if it was beaded garden garland i've had them for so long but i've already checked my spacing and i know that this is the space that is going to give me the best look for what i'm going for so you can find some beads and just make sure you've got about an inch and a half if your little molds are about the same size as mine I'm just going to use a pick to make sure that I get the glue out while it's still wet so that's open for our string. I'm going to use a awl. You can use a screwdriver for this or an ice pick, you know, something like that. You could even use a drill if you're feeling really crafty. And I'm just going to poke a hole in the center top of each one of these. Kind of wiggle it around a little bit and be careful because it's going to be sharp on the other side, but you shouldn't really have to touch that. This one's kind of domed in the middle, so I had to make sure I held it in place to keep it in the middle. And then I'm gonna check again to make sure everything is how I like it. And then I'm gonna take some jute. Now, if you don't wanna use jute, you can grab a ribbon or cord, you can use baker's twine, anything that matches your decor. I've gone ahead and cut about two feet off, just to have to the side. Now, for the bell, we need a clapper or the little piece that is uh, at the bottom of the bell that, you know, rings the bell. So, I'm just using a little ornament. This is just a little um, metallic ornament that I'm putting some brushed silver onto. 
and I'm going to do two layers of that because I want to mattify it so it won't be so bright. I want it to look more like the other metals that we're using. So the first layer I just painted on and after it dried I'm just going to use a little stippler and just stipple it on and you see how the look is very similar. Now all the way around the edge, about a half an inch, I'm going to go around and just stipple on some more on the bottom of each of these. You don't have to do this step if you don't want to, but for me it gives a little more dimension and it gives it a little more aging. If you really like rustic, you could go in there with some antiquing wax or a brown paint and stipple that on there to make it look kind of rusty. Now I'm going to put two coats on here. I could have used a gray, but you're really not going to see this necessarily. But just in case it was to peek out, I went ahead and added a little color to it so it wouldn't be so alarmingly orange. Then I'm going to glue that little top on there. Don't want that falling off once we get it all arranged. Now you know on jute, it's kind of raggedy on the edges. It kind of frays. So if you just take a little bit of cool temp glue, don't do this, do not do this y'all with the hot glue. You can make a little point like a shoestring and you can thread it right through. So I'm just threading it right through that ball ornament. I'm going to tie, and this is why it's very important also to have that glued down so it doesn't pop off while you're tying. I'll put a double knot in there. Be careful because this is plastic. All of this is plastic. It's not metal. You don't want to put too much strength in there and break your project. Then you got to start over. We don't have time for that, do we? We don't have time for that. No, we don't. We're busy people, and it's the holiday season. We got shopping to do. We got to get this crafts done. Okay, so I'll start with the biggest one. I'm going to feed it up in here, and what I'm doing that you can't really see is trying to adjust how long I want my length to be, how far I want that little clapper, if you will, to hang out. Then I'm going to hold it with my hand until I can add a little glue to help hold it in place. I don't want it to slip once I know where I want to position it. Then I'll take my first little divider section and I will put that on the top of the largest one. I'm going to add hot glue around there and then press that down in that hot glue to hold it in place. If you're concerned, be sure you're using Gorilla Glue or you were using some um, E6000, something to keep it in place. Then I'm going to put the next section down, but I'm not going to glue it. I'll thread the next little divider on and I'll glue that one on right on the top. We're not gluing on the underneath part, just the top, because this is gonna allow us to still get the movement of the individual ones. You can see how I can rock that back and forth, and that's, that's what I want. I want to have that movement still. But if you wanna glue yours all together in one piece, you could certainly do that. See, just testing it out to see, and yes, it is working beautifully. So the little bead that's on top was also painted a silver color. I'm going to add some hot glue and push that bead right down over that center, right in the center. And then I'm just going to tie a knot right on top of the bead. You can definitely do a double knot here if you would like, but we're also going to be tying it, tying it off up here. So we'll have that all in order shortly. And it works beautifully. Look how cute this is. I love this. You could even spray paint these in any color you like. You could even use gold paint on it if you don't want the silver or the aluminum look. It's totally up to you. This entire video is about inspiration. The whole thing. I know you don't necessarily have exactly all the same things I have, but you know, all my videos are about bringing y'all some inspiration to get you excited and thinking out of the box. And what can you do on a budget to still have beautiful decor in your home? I'm always willing to show you how if you watch and get inspired. Just keep an open mind. Look how cute. Love it. And it is perfectly perfect. But you can always add. Thank you to my channel members. I love you guys so, so much. Okay, now we got the 70s kids ornament. So I'm going to take this little jello mold or pan, tart pan. I'm going to take the coaster. I'm going to use a little bit of this foam here. There's a space right there that I need to glue this to, and I want it to have a little support. So this little 3M, it's like a foam sticker or mounting type stuff. I'm just going to add that right in the middle. You could always glue a dot if you want. Look at my fingerprint from that silver paint. Ugh. I'm such a messy crafter. 
Okay, I'm going to try to center it and then I'll push it down right onto that foam. You can use a wood block here, you can use a piece of a paint stir stick, anything you want. Or you can flip it around and use the other side. Totally up to you. Then I saw this little tree I had in my pile that is, uh, you know, taken over my basement. And I thought, you know, the color is so similar to what is going on in the scarf and in the little girl's dress. That this would be perfect. So I just glued it down to the bottom and then I grabbed some pearls and I just decided to use the little indentions in the side of the mold to just add these little pearls. And I'm doing every other one all the way around just to give it a little sparkle, a little shine. It is Christmas, you know. By the way, I'm a 70s girl. Any of y'all 70s babies? I was born in 73. Yep, 73. I'm a Gen Xer. Then I'm going to take a bigger pearl and go right on the tip top of the tree. Isn't it cute? How simple. Now I'm just going to take my awl. If you have a thin aluminum, you can pretty much wiggle the awl back and forth on both sides and get a hole in it. Just be careful that you support it so you don't dent it too badly. And then I'm going to add a hook to it. And that makes that ornament. The next one is our up on the roof ornament. All right, so here we go with another one of those pans. I like the color, but I think we're gonna do something a little different. I wanna give you a variety of ways that you can treat these. So you can choose what your favorite is. Maybe you'll wanna do different ones like me, or maybe you'll wanna do all of them in the same thing. Totally up to you. So I'm gonna use my Mod Podge brush and my Mod Podge. I'm gonna go all the way around the inside and then uh, get it on the table, very important step. And then I'm going to wipe off all of the excess that I have knocked over the edges um, because I put too much in there. Then I'm going to set it down in a pan and add some of that beautiful, it's, I'm not going to say it's glittery, but it's a very, very fine texture. You don't have to use the fine texture though, and you could also use Epsom salt or table salt, or you can use some of the flake snow. Totally up to you. Just gonna kinda rock it around in there and tap off the excess. So pretty and frosted. See, there's the mess I was talking about. And then I'm gonna carefully dry it. Now, when you add the heat onto one of those little tins, keep in mind it's metal and it's gonna get hot. So don't touch it. You Do not touch it, I want y'all to stay safe. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of snow to the hat and the end of the hat and the, the chimney where he is sitting getting prepared to go down the chimney. And I'm gonna add that right around those edges and then put a little bit of that snow on there and tap off the excess. You could always layer this, you know, let it dry and then add more if you wanted to. But I think a little bit's good. Oh, he's cute. Got lots of these little wooden type ornaments. I think these are more like what, maybe the 80s? I don't know, what year do you think these were from? I couldn't see any markers on them. But I know I want him to kind of nestle in there. So once I decide how he's going to sit and what pieces are going to be touching the back, I'll add some of that glue on there to help hold him in place. And you could also use um, you know, like a mounting tape if you wanted to. You could certainly do that there. Whatever's gonna give you the best grip. So in the top center, I am going to miss my mark. I'm gonna take my awl and then just kind of tap it into here with my hammer and I'm protecting my table with just a piece of really thick um, cardboard because I don't want to poke more holes in the poor table than's already there and then I'm just showing you another way you know you can make the hook simple simple it doesn't really matter if you put it in frontwards backwards I don't really think there's a front and back of a hook anyway you can twist it in whatever direction that you like and certainly if you have another hook that you like best just go ahead and use that the next is gonna be Frosty the Snowman. So I decided to use the small one here. And we're gonna extend Frosty and make him look even taller. Maybe it's Frosty the Snow Girl and it's a big dress. So I've chosen a blue paint that's gonna match the blue that is in the little outfit that the snowman already has. And I'm going to paint this all over this piece. 
I do give it two coats and let it dry in between. And um, I like to use my heating tool, but again, protect your fingers. And then I'm going to add a little bit of snow on him too, right around his hat. And then I'll also add it on the edge of that uh, robe or whatever that the clothes that he's wearing. It's actually like a very thin pipe cleaner down there, but I'm gonna add it there too. I'll dip his little hat down in the snow and I just add more snow as needed. I keep it in the little bag and then add it and then I add it all back, all my excess, when I don't use it so I can save it. And just tap it off and then dip that little end in there and get it all into that little pipe cleaner border. Okay, so once this is dry, I'm gonna brush this with some of that Mod Podge. You don't want to keep going over and over the spots because it can lift your paint up. So just, you know, get it on there and then get away from it. Then I'm going to pour that snow all over it. So in this case, it's going to be covered in snow. The entire outside, which is now kind of our, the part that you're going to see. Isn't that beautiful? I love the shine and the, the sparkle in that snow. I'm gonna use my glue here to attach him right to the top. And then the string that he had was very frayed and damaged. I was afraid to pull too much on it. So I just added some glue, twisted it back on itself, let it dry for just a moment. And then while it was still a little damp, I just made a loop with my fingers and pushed it back on itself. And then once that is dry, you can see it's all stuck together. I can use the original hook or tie. Always precious, precious, precious. Okay, the next one is a Merry Mouse. All right, here's one of those little mini loaf pans. Look at this beautiful mouse. I absolutely love this. I never can get enough ornaments at one time to use these in a tree by itself. So that's why I use them in my crafts. And I, I love to share these things with y'all because like I said, I have a lot of subscribers and viewers who love vintage. So I wanna show you these things, right? I wanna share them with you. If you wanna make these look old, I just started off by going around the edge with a rough brush. Now I'm gonna start blending it outward and upward so that it's not going to be so dark and you're not gonna see all of those brush marks. It's just gonna make it end up looking like it is rusted and old. Now you'll have to let this dry if you want to do the backside next. And I'm gonna leave out the places where I'm going to add glue to put the mouse down because wax doesn't play good with hot glue. So we're gonna leave that spot open. Once it is dry, I'm going to kind of measure my tinsel I know that I want to use this red, so I'm going to just measure it and cut a section off. I'm going to use some E6000 and some hot glue. And I'll put some little spaces with E6000 and around the corners, and then some of the spaces are going to have hot glue. The hot glue is just going to hold it down long enough, at least, for the E6000 to hold everything down. So I'm just going to push it down, push it into the crevice or the lip there underneath the side. It's still going to show on the outside. I love that it is very thin. And I'll tell you, a lot of my very thin tinsel has come off of Dollar Tree, uh, like tinsel type ornaments and things that they have that I don't like. But the tinsel that you get off of it is wonderful. Or the garland pieces, wonderful for these old vintage things. So think about that. When you see them at Dollar Tree, you can tear them apart and use it for something else. Now you can do the back of your pan there if you want to, if you want to age it, but I'm not concerned about that. I'm going to use one of those little bows. I'm going to push it through and then I will twist this around. I know y'all don't want to see me struggle with this wire, so I'm just going to do it quickly here and hold that in place. Then make a hook for it and I'll go through the original hole that was already in the pan give it a twist and then I can make a hook up here now if it looks too long just cut it off and do another one you know do it again just wrap it again 
Now you can see he was already attached to something originally. It looked like he was already glued in a sitting position, but when I found him, he wasn't like that. I put a little Christmas tree in his arms with his little gold envelope or his naughty list, whatever he's holding for Santa, and then just sat him down right in the bottom of that pan. And I think he looks adorable. Is that not the cutest little mouse ornament you've ever seen? So if you want to get super fancy, you can take a paintbrush or a pencil or something and kind of wrap, wrap the end of a piece of wire to just make your hook look a little more fancy and unique. It's still going to function exactly the same way. No worries about that. I am loving this one. Oh, but wait, it gets better. The next one is going to be a stocking ornament. So here's a little more of that tinsel that came off of another project. I'm going to wrap it up around my hand. Just kind of, I want to try to make a, like a little circle that I can put right in the bottom of this pan. I know that it's going to fit, so I'm going to go ahead and add my glue and then just press that down into the glue. Now look at this little baby sock. Is this not the cutest thing? No worries, y'all. I found three or four socks and none of them had a match to them. I know they are old. I know they are old. I want to attach it carefully to our ornament, so I'm just going to use some more of that mounting foam, stick it on the top edge of that little stocking or sock. We're going to call it a stocking because we want it to look like it's a miniature, right? So we're going to call it our stocking. And then you can either put it right on the edge or you can put it right underneath the edge to cover that up. I am going to add another layer of tinsel on the top. And I think I like, I'm saying tinsel, but I don't even know that that is the appropriate word for that. Is tinsel the stuff that goes around the tree or the little icicles that hang off the tree? Somebody please correct me. I know somebody out there wants to correct me. Where are my English teachers? What is that? So anyway, I'm putting that around there. I love that the red and the white, it just looks pretty together to me. Look how sweet that is. Oh my gosh, that little sock is too precious. I can just see that with a little black patent shoe. Can you see the little girl in that? I can see it. I can so see it. And she's got her little patent purse, you know, with her little nickels in it. Oh, it's so cute. Okay, so I put another bow there on the top because she needed it. And then I'm just going to make another little hook with our little piece of wire here and this I'm just threading right up into that wet glue that where I put the uh, the bow down I'll give it a twist or two to hold it in place and then bend that hook over any way you like twist it up twist it around it's still gonna work on the tree oh so cute I love that The next one is going to be Santa ornament. Look at this little Santa. Look at this little guy, so cute. We're going to use the larger circle, a little block, some white chalk paint and a brush. And I'm gonna start off by painting the outside of this white. When I first started doing this, I wasn't entirely sure. I knew that I wanted to put Santa in the middle of it, but I wasn't entirely sure which direction I wanted to go. So I'm gonna just take that block and I'm gonna paint that white too. Right in the inside of that pan, I'm going to add that block. It's just not painted on the side and on the bottom that's attached. And then I'm gonna go around the inside with the white paint. I use two coats of white paint on the inside and outside of this pan and let it dry completely. And then I'll use a little more. Now this actually came off of one of those white mini trees from Dollar Tree. So it was one that I broke and I just saved the, the broken part of the branch and cut this off with my wire cutters and now it makes a perfect little bottom or a little snowy bottom for this ornament. So I placed it down in here, pushed it right down in that glue, and then I can put Santa in the middle. I'm gonna grab some Mod Podge and a kind of a chunky rough brush and just kind of gob it on in there. I'm not pouring it on because I don't want it to be like that. I want it to be just all over there so that when we sprinkle on our snow, it is going to stick down in there and be very pretty and look like a 
frozen ground, frozen grass. You know, we don't get snow here in Alabama on a regular basis, so I've kind of forgotten what it looks like. But I do know what frozen grass looks like. And this kind of looks like it. It looks like frosty grass in the morning. So we're going to stand Santa up in there. Maybe this is a southern Santa. Who knows? And of course, if there's frost on the ground and snow on the ground, it's going to be some on his hat. So right on the ball of his hat. And then we can also add it to the little tiny Christmas tree that he is holding. Pat, pat, pat. And sprinkle, sprinkle. Oh, the magic word is Santa. Make a note of it. And not only do I want you to say the magic word in your comment, I also want you to tell me which of the ornaments in this video was your favorite. You gotta have them both in there if you want a chance of winning the prize box. Okay, great. Now, on to the next. We are making a little cake. This is a Christmas cake. I'm gonna add some territorial beige on the top because I didn't have the right color chalk paint. If I did, I would have used it. So I've just kind of gobbed it on here. It's kind of thick, but I do thin it out a bit. And then I paint it twice to get a nice coverage. I think it looks pretty good for like a bunt cake. Pretty good, pretty close. So it looks like a mini cake. We need to add frosting because this is a festive cake, right? I don't have puff paint, but I do have slick paint. So I'm taking this slick paint and I'm gonna use it like an icing on the top. Now I started off by just kind of squiggling like a squiggle line all over from the inside outward as if you were icing a cake. You would probably do it that way. And then I thought, well, if I add some heat, maybe it will run. Well, it didn't run, but it did make it a little bit easier to maneuver. So I grabbed a little craft stick and just lightly kind of swirled in it without dragging through to that brown base coat. Just kind of drug through it like, you know, like ice on a cake, I guess. I pushed it around and then I decided that I wanted it to look like Maybe the cake was still warm in some spots and there were some pieces that kind of melted downward and kind of expanded over a bit. So I just went along with the little pieces that were already hanging down and sort of pushed them out a little bit and then did the same thing in random spots all the way around the top of the cake in quotations. I don't know that puff paint would have had the same look um, as this, but you know, feel free to use what you have and see it, a lot of crafting is experimental anyway, right? You could certainly try it. Okay, so now uh, it's so thick there. I put so much on there. I decided let me go ahead and just use this without adding more and then um, go right down into the center of the cake with it. Y'all look at this cake. Oh my goodness. This is so cute to me. All right, I'm gonna let that dry just a tad and I'm gonna twist the ends of this stem. I got this pick from Timu. If you didn't see my Timu haul where I got all my greenery, you need to watch it, I'll link it. Um, I'm not trying to sell you anything, but these are beautiful and I got a big bag of them. Okay, so I've let it sit for just a minute. I want it to get a little bit more tacky and then I'm gonna add some more of the snow on the top. It's gonna give it a little sparkle, gonna look kind of sugary and pretty and beautiful like all the treats that we have at Christmas time. Very pretty. You can still see that it is wet here. It's going to need a little time to dry. All right, now it is dry. Perfect. And we need a bottom for our cake. So I've got these little doilies. Now these are very old doilies, but you can get them at Dollar Tree. Something simple that will work, you know. Again, the center of these are elevated and I need it to be a little more flat to attach anything to the bottom of it because attaching to the edges can be difficult. So I can do that by working with the middle. I'm just going to use a little wood piece. I'm going to take a piece of cardboard paper and cut out the same, I just traced it and cut it out. It's the same size as the one that I'm using. I'm going to overlay that onto the doily. So once it's attached, you're really not gonna see that white cardboard or the white, um, paper that I'm using. I'm just using a glue stick here. Now this one's clear. It is the first one I grabbed, so I just went ahead and used it. I prefer my purple, but I went ahead and used the gel or the uh, clear. So I'm going to push this on here. I'm going to try to get it centered with the 
the shape that's around there so it looks nice and pretty and symmetrical and then I'm just going to push it into place and then I'll grab my little Mod Podge squeegee and carefully work around here. You got to be careful when you're using a squeegee on any type of doily because they're so fragile and fine the way that they are made with all those little cutouts. You don't want to tear anything. I'm going to use some hot glue and some E6000 which you don't see to hold these two pieces together. I made sure that it was right on top of the other piece. Right in the center, I'm going to add a little well of hot glue and then sit this down in it. Look how pretty and festive this looks. Oh my goodness. So now I have some rickrack. Y'all, I have several rolls of this and I cannot find it. I don't know what I did with it. I have no idea. Me and my husband were tearing the basement up and I could not find it. This is what I had and it is the smallest one that I have too. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be on the shopping list. Little Rick Rack. I'm gonna tie just a knot and we're gonna make a, a little soft hanger for this. We're not even gonna use wire. So if you don't like wire hangers, you don't have to use them. I'll tuck this right underneath the edge, grab my hot glue, add that on there, and then just kind of poke it in there with my paintbrush and let that dry. I love this. I think it is so pretty. The next is a baby deer. Look at this little vintage piece. He's so cute. This is one that I had already done and it has dried. This is a piece of holly pick that I got at the thrift store. I'll go ahead on this one and put the hole in the top. You can see where it's at. And then I will add my hook because it re doesn't really matter which order you do this in. It really doesn't. You can do this first if it bothers you. Whatever you want to do. I'm going to cut this pick apart. It is only plastic, so I'm not ruining my scissors. If it was wire in there, I would use my wire cutters for that. But I'm going to use this to my advantage and cut it into smaller pieces. I want this to be exactly in the center underneath where the hanger is. So I'm putting that right there on the bottom, adding some glue. I'm going to cut a piece of a crafting stick to make a little seat. It is going to help hold that greenery down. And it is also going to be a nice little flat seat to glue the deer down. This is more of a little woodland or rustic look. So many options with these little tart pans and jello molds. So many. So, I have the option of putting a bow in here. If you had bells, you could do bells. You know, think of all the ways you could do this if you wanted. Make it your own. That's right. Make it your own. So precious. The next one is a Christmas tree. So here's the little pan we're going to use. Here is our little tree. I'm going to use some gold paint, a brush, and a little bit of this. This is like batting or something. It came out of um, upholstery, I think. It was given to me by my friend, Miss Linda. I'm going to add some gold in the bottom of the pan and then brush it all the way outward. I was very surprised at the coverage of this too. This is very good coverage, but um, I do give this two coats just on the inside though. And at first I didn't paint the outside, so I will be doing that shortly. Once that is nice and dried, I am going to go around the edges with a little bit of that Mod Podge. And you can see I'm only going down maybe a quarter of an inch because this is gonna be more of a dipped look rather than being all over the thing. It's gonna be a little bit different. So I've added more down in the bottom of the pan, a little more snow. I'm gonna drop it in there, shake it around, move it around a little bit, adjust it, move the snow, and then I'll carefully pick that up. And once it's got good enough coverage, or I feel like it has without looking, I can go ahead and lift that out, tap it off, and look how pretty. Yes. 
I am going to add just a little random ornament to the top of the tree. It's a star and it's kind of an iridescent color. I thought it looked really cute with this. I'll take a little bit of that fluff, twist it around with my hands, almost make it like a little cord to wrap around the bottom of the tree. You don't have to use a lot of glue to hold this together because this stuff will stick and it will definitely stick to the roughness of that little tree. So I'll just tuck it in push it around there, add a little bit of glue on the bottom, and then I can position it in the center bottom of the ornament. Poking it in there with my fingers to make sure it is sticking down in the glue. I'll add a little glue on the top center for the star. That's just gonna help hold it in place as well. So far, so good. If you want more snow at that point, you can add more, totally up to you. This is when I decided to go ahead and paint the back. I only gave it one coat. So you can see that you can do it this way if you want, but you don't have to. Especially if the ornament is inside of the tree, you know. So it is dry now, and I am going to put another hanger on here. This is a little bit different. It's gonna be tied the same way. This is just a little bit of gold ribbon, and you can pretty much get any type of ribbon you want to do this. I have found that when you're using it as a hanger, using a thin ribbon like this usually works best, or the ones that are even thinner. You could use baker's twine, you could use jute, whatever you want to use. And once I get that knot in there, it's ready to go. I'll add a little hot glue down in the little ridge that goes up to that star and then press that, the tails and the knot, straight down into that glue. And just push it down with my brush to make sure that everything stays in place. Then, you know, go ahead, add more if you want. Take a little out if you want, because it's really not glued tightly in there. It's just kind of stuck in there. And I'm just making it a little bit thicker down there. If you have enjoyed the 10 projects that we have done in this video, I would appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up. Share the video with someone that you care about who you think would like it as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And I think y'all already know why, don't you? Mm-hmm. You know why. Because it's Subscriber Appreciation Month. That's right. It's here. What does that mean for you? What do you think that means? Did you see this in another video? Hmm? That means you will get a... You get your name in the hat to win a prize. Every video. Every video this month. Except for a week. You're going to be playing this game with me. Take screenshots. Read all this information. participate it's going to be fun and i'm getting ready to pack up some boxes to get them shipped out to you i thank you so much for watching and the best of luck see you again soon bye